Sunday afternoon. I um been doing admin and editing videos and working on a new dress commission all morning and I just felt the need to come out for a quick walk and get some fresh air and get some steps in. But the air is really warm, really weirdly hot air, it's very windy and it smells of poop. So not so much fresh air. Anyway, I've got a little task to do while I'm out. I'm going to have a look at the blackberry bushes and just see how close they are to being ready to pick. I also want to check the elderberries because I think we're probably getting close to picking season. So let's go and have a look at those. some of the elderberries. They've got a long way to go and it looks like the birds have already, already eaten a lot of them. But when they ripen we'll get what we can. It's a sharing process. Let's go and have a look at the blackberries. I don't think they're going to be ready yet. I've seen a few ripe ones on the odd bush, but yeah, look, you see, you've got the odd one. I'm going to eat now. It tastes really good. There's a long way to go before the others are ready though. They're getting there. Just need more sunshine. Look at these little ones, look. Hopefully, it's going to be a good season. They are turning. If all of these ripen, it will be a good season. Look at them all. Thousands and thousands of blackberries. All slowly ripening. Lovely. Let's go and have a look at the last bush. So hoping to pick rose hips this year. I didn't pick any last year, but the year before I picked and dried loads of them. Rose hips make a really nice tea, but you must strain it because the seeds inside are covered in what looks like fur and it's an irritant. But if you dry them, Oh wow, look, these blackberries look ready. Oh my goodness, look at them all. Mm. This bush is always a really good one. The size of these berries. Oh, 
to them. I think. I could have picked a load of these today. I'm going to come back later in the week and pick a load of these. Because a lot of these are right ready. It's such a shame to waste them. And most of them you can't even reach, look. So they're right over the back. So the birds will get their fair share. It doesn't like, look like an awful lot of these being eaten and I don't know anyone who picks them I'll probably come back say Thursday because tomorrow's a busy day Wednesday is a cleaning day I'll stop eating these now they're so good so if I come back Thursday and do a first pick. I can get those bottled. That was good recce. just seen some people leave downstairs so as my neighbour said would probably happen she's moving out she's got this new chat with her and he's been here for about three or four weeks now they went on holiday for a week and since then they've just been back but no one's been working or anything like that doesn't seem to be much happening and just now I've seen a couple leave and it, they're clearly doing viewings downstairs. They never put up to let signs here. They, I think they have like waiting lists for these places. They go really, really fast. So I'm going to be having a new neighbour. I hope they're not noisy people. You never know who you're going to get. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Nervous. So that'll be this month, I think, because I'm pretty sure she said that uh, the contract was up um, August. Well, they haven't moved out yet, that's for sure. Anyway, so, oh, all change again. Crazy. I've just found downstairs flat advertised on the um, letting agents website and I've been really shocked because it's £175 a month more than my place. That makes me nervous because my rent is my um, uh, tenancy is due for renewal. Uh, next month. Sorry, I'm distracted. The third viewing has, is just taking place now. People come in and out like anything with these flats. Um, £175 a month more. That's scary. I really hope my rent doesn't go up that much. Because I know that the current rent is the same as mine. <sighs> I 
That's really worrying. I hate it when I see things like that because now I have to wait and see what happens. Worrying. I always get nervous around about the time that rent is due. That month, maybe even two months before I'm expecting the email, I start to look around the flat and think, right, what can I get rid of? What are the logistics of moving heavy stuff? And I start looking at the price of storage units just to see how that compares to the price of rent. And I know that it's certainly a mindset since the pandemic where rent prices have gone through the roof and mortgage interest rates have been very erratic where none of us feel that secure. So I don't think this is purely a rental thing. And also I've always been like it because you have no control over what might happen with your rent or what inflation rates are going to be like, all that sort of thing. So it's just this, I don't know why I worry about it because what will be will be, it is what it is. But I always, I'm, I'm always a plan ahead kind of person. So as soon as I think, oh, this might end up being too much, I might have to move, I might have to do this, I always start looking ahead to what I can do to mitigate that so that I have some kind of information to go in with in case things go wrong. So that's why I look at, you know, the value of storage units. Um, I look at, right, how am I going to get rid of stuff? And I know the plan for... Um, if I had to move out of here and had nowhere else to go, I know what stuff I would get the charity shops to come and take away. I know what stuff I would put in storage. I know what stuff I'd have to just throw out or get rid of. It's a lot harder than it used to be because when that used to happen to me previously, I was always in house shares. So I, it, it, I was moving the contents of a room. And because I had my studio in town, the big stuff, the business, all the heavy stuff, and anything else that didn't fit into my one room in a house share would be in there. So it never used to be a problem. Whenever I had to move, and I had to move a lot since I had that studio, it was easy. I'd fill up the back of the car a couple of times and I'd be moved. Now it's not that easy. And I'm going to have to hire removal people not because of things like furniture, because i probably just get rid of that, but because I have a semi-industrial sewing machine for my business now, which I couldn't do my work without it. I have a domestic sewing machine, but it, it can't do the work that a semi-industrial can do. So I would need strong people to come and lift that. I can't lift that on my own. I can't get it up and down stairs. So I would have to hire people to do that. Everything else I can move. All the furniture would go. See, my brain is overthinking this now. I'm, I'm mentally prepping for if the worst case scenario happens. So far it happened, hasn't happened. The first... So I moved in here in 2018 and until I think it was 20... Might have been 2021 or 2022, my rent never went up. And then it started to go up. But it only went up by £50 a month, which I could do. Having seen that the flat below is £175 more per month, frightens me. But when I have seen the other flats being vacated and coming up as new tenancies, those prices have also been higher. So I don't know whether it's that they take that opportunity of a clean slate to whack the price up and make some extra money whether it's because if you are an existing tenant and you are not a trouble tenant, they'd rather just keep you there so they stick to a lower amount. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they do it. Um, and I'm hoping that it only goes up by the same amount as it has been in the last few years. I can cope with that. I've already planned for that. But £175 a month is a bit scary. That's a hell of a leap. So I will be now constantly worrying about this until that rental agreement comes through. And we'll just have to see what happens. There's no point in me worrying about it because, you know, they will do what they will do. They don't care. 
they'll easily fill this. I mean, they had seven viewings down there today. Uh, that's probably already been taken now. Despite that cost, because that is still pretty cheap. It's probably about average for this area, I would say, because this is a cheap area. Which is why I would probably be pushed into taking it rather than... There's no point in me moving, because I wouldn't get anything cheaper than where I am. The, these rents are not extortionate. But if I'm moving because I can't afford to, or I don't want to pay the rent here, then I'm not going to find anywhere else. Which means that I'm going to be effectively homeless. And I have to decide how I deal with that. Of course, the easy thing is get a, get a better job, get extra work, make extra money. And that, of course, is what I am working on. It's what I'm doing at the moment. Things have improved a lot this year, but has it improved enough? Just have to wait and see. I probably will know about... The dates are funny. Sometime, a couple of times I found out in August. Most of the time I find out in September when the agreement comes through. It'll probably be this month, but it may be towards the end of the month. We just have to wait and see. It is Tuesday evening and if you are here for the yellow sticker hauls then I have a few things for you. First thing is cheese. This is a piece of double Gloucester, was £1.94, 49p. Uh, what else did I get? Ah, oh, this ribbon. Rhubarb. This was... £1.30 down to 39p and I bought two. I think I'm going to keep one out and make a crumble and freeze the rest of it for another crumble. Winter crumbles really, I should be keeping it all for that. We have here a bag of white potato. I'm assuming this is a 2k bag. It is. It doesn't look big enough to be a 2k bag. This was £1.39 down to 35p. Do not usually see them discounted that much, so that's a good one. And the last thing I bought was a bad thing, um, but equally it's for a reason. So this is a ham and coleslaw baguette. It was £3 down to 75p. And the reason I sometimes pick up this stuff on a Tuesday evening is because on Wednesday I miss lunch. So I'll have a bit of breakfast before I go and then I won't be back until half past two. And it's too late to have lunch and too early to have dinner. So I'll have something like that just to keep me going because I'm usually pretty hungry by the time I get home. That was it for today. That all cost £2.37. And as usual, I should put all the information up there. That is the end of Tuesday. Getting out this evening was a good idea because my brain was, I was going round and round in my head about the rent thing and there's nothing I can do about it so that kind of got me out of that and that's the end of Tuesday This morning, or today should I say, is Friday but for some reason I thought it was Monday because I thought Wednesday and Thursday were the weekend. I don't know what's the matter with me. Anyway, so I've just been out and sent another vintage parcel. It's very slow but steady, which is good. It's a very slow trickle, but we're okay with that. And uh, yeah, let's get the end of the week over with. It's Friday afternoon. It's not supposed to rain, but the weather's all over the place. It's really windy, but I really wanted to get out and get a first haul of blackberries before they go off. So I'm taking a chance and I'm going to get out. I've got two Tupperware, you know, plastic Tupperware type boxes with me and I'm going to fill those up as best I can and then I'm going to bottle those when I get back. I have a ton of stuff to do this weekend. I have a dress to finish, two cleaning jobs to do. So I wanted to do this today because 
I won't be here again. I won't be able to get out here again until Monday otherwise. And I think it's going to rain quite a lot over the weekend. So, it's not cold, but it is pretty windy. So let's get down the park and see what we can get. I managed to fill both my Tupperware boxes to the brim which is a really good start to the season because most of the berries still haven't even ripened. I had foraging really satisfying. August was when the autumn fruit starts to develop. You'll get your rose hips later in the year You've got your blackberries and I really enjoy going out and foraging and picking supplies for winter and prepping for the winter months ahead and it's a nice comfort food so I can bottle and freeze what I pick and eat it during the winter. And I really enjoy that process, that process of foraging and hoarding for leaner months. And of course, this saves money. And although I enjoy the, the foraging for what it is, it's a really important way for me to be able to manage budgets because fruit is very expensive in the shops and if I can pick the free stuff that's even better. I think I will be back next week picking another load. It tastes so good. This one area near me just has the best blackberry bushes. And despite the council gardener's attempts to keep them back, they continue to grow and produce a huge amount of fruit, most of which I can't reach. All the best bits I cannot reach. So nature gets its fair share and I get a little bit. <laughs> so I'm gonna head home now. I'm gonna show you how I bottle these up and then they will store through the winter. So I'll see you back home. I'm back with a few bramble scratches to add to my falling down the stairs bruises. I look a right state at the moment. Right, so I managed to fill both of these with blackberries. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wash them. I'm going to give them a rinse and then I'm going to get my jars I'm going to measure out how many jars I need and then measure out for making the, the, the sugar solution that they will be stored in. So let's get going on that.
just need to go through my box of jars. Here's one that I'm going to use, which I used last year. And what else have we got? This old Hellman's mayonnaise, may, mayonnaise jar will be a good one. There's a nice Charwoods one there. Uh, and then that's from Mincemeat. That will probably be enough. But I'm going to measure them out and then we'll see if we have enough. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is fill these jars with blackberries to get a rough idea of how many of these jars I actually need. do next is I just need to work out how much water I need to make up the solution. So what I'm going to do, get my saucepan, I'm going to fill each jar with cold water So that will show me how much water I need when it's full. And then I'm just going to tip that into my saucepan. Because it's a surprisingly small amount of water that you need to fill up each jar. And I don't want to make too much sugar solution and then it gets wasted. So that's all the water that I need to do all five jars. So what I'm now going to do is measure out how much water that is. is six cups of water and what I'm now going to do is boil this water on the hob and I'm going to put in about three cups of sugar and dissolve that into that and then I'm going to put the blackberries into the water to make sure that they get nice and hot and they've been nicely submerged in that. And then while that's happening, I'm going to put hot water in here and then the empty jars will go in here so that I can acclimatize them to the temperature so that when the boiling water goes into the jars, the glass doesn't crack. So I'm gonna boil that. Boil that. That's not bad for a first harvest. I should be able to get one or two more out of this. We'll see how we get on. Now I need my sugar. I'll measure out my sugar here.
I'm going to have to do this in two stages because I've run out of room in my saucepan. <laughs> I need a bigger saucepan. So I'm going to do three jars first and then add the other two once the blackberries are in these jars. So I'm just waiting for the hot water so that I can warm these jars through. And then I'll be ready to start putting them into the jars. try and get these from there to there. I'm going to need all these jars now, these smaller ones, now that the blackberries have been um, cooked for a bit. Have squashed down. So I don't know I'm going to need the two small ones. So I'm just going to let these warm for a minute their lids on. Find the lids. Let these warm through. And then I'm going to tip the juice in with the remaining blackberries that are swimming around and won't leave. <laughs> so that should do for that. There we go. Right, so I'm going to seal these up, leave them in the water for a bit, and then we'll stand them to crawl. So I've got three there, and that's it. And once they have crawled, those lock lids should depress with the as, it, as the process happens, and then I can store these through winter. <laughs> 